Here is Justin Trudeau answering questions. I can't wait to see how he maneuvers around them. I, uh, like you said, Elijah Colson from Global News. Um, in your press release today, you say that renters feel like the deck is stacked against them. Uh, do you bear responsibility for that feeling after being in power the last eight years? I think we've seen uh, how important it is to support young people who are at the center of our economy and the center of Canada's success in the 21st century. And yet, we've seen time and time again uh, international issues, whether it's inflation or interest rates uh, or war or destabilized supply chains or a pandemic or climate change, knock young people about. We need to meet them where... So the answer is, according to Trudeau, no. He does not bear responsibility for the fact that young individuals, all individuals for that matter in Canada, are seriously struggling at the present time. It's never Trudeau's fault. It's never his fault for all of the economic perils that are currently afflicting Canada. No, no, no. It's everyone's fault except for himself. But when the economic structure of Canada changes, well, then it's shining white knight armor Trudeau to the rescue. Thank heavens he's here. Thank heavens he's there. Without him, how would the economy ever recover? It's nonsense. Inflation, for example. He likes to talk about inflation. He uh, claims that it's an international issue. Whose fault is inflation? Who's printing Canadian dollars? Are you printing Canadian dollars? Am I printing Canadian dollars? None of us, not big businessmen, not small businessmen, not charities, not individual families, not students, not professors, not anyone is printing Canadian dollars. The Bank of Canada is printing Canadian dollars. Trudeau is printing Canadian dollars. And of course, printing Canadian dollars is what causes inflation. It's what inflation is. It's the printing of money. It's an increase in the supply of money. Full stop. That's what inflation is. Or interest rates. Who's controlling the interest rates? Are you controlling the interest rates? Am I controlling Canadian interest rates? Are big businessmen controlling interest rates? Of course not. Interest rates in this centralized, socialized system are set by the federal bureaucracy. So when Trudeau talks about all of these issues or all of these factors that are causing Canadians to struggle, he's indicting himself where we are. Yes, uh, we have invested massively in housing over the past years, but there is a need to do more. There is something fundamentally unfair about the fact that young people or renters pay $2,000 a month for rent, whereas someone paying $2,000 in their mortgage payments gets credit for that, gets to build their credit score, gets to uh, access more financing from the banks. But if you pay $2,000 every month in rent, or even more in, in many cases, that doesn't count towards anything. That's not taken into account in evaluating you as someone who can be offered a mortgage and a pathway to home ownership. That's something that the number of renters increasing across the country, and they, quite frankly, the raise in rents across the country is requiring us to do. So that's why the heart of this announcement is about making sure we're focused on fairness. Fairness for renters, fairness for young people, fairness for the future. Uh, we're bringing forward a number of measures today to focus on renters, uh, but over the next weeks, we're going to be talking about all the different things we're doing to bring in fairness for young people and for all Canadians. Right. So, but no fairness for the landlord. No fairness for the capitalist. No fairness for the investor who's actually bought the home and is now renting it out. No, no fairness for them. No fairness at all for them. Of course, rent is going up. We have no more houses. We have no more houses to sell. The supply is lagging behind this extravagant demand. So of course, rent has to increase. Without it, think of the chaos that would be in the streets at the present time. It's bad enough as it is. If the market weren't allowed to work, and it's not allowed to work enough right now, but if it weren't allowed to work fully, if it weren't allowed to uh, move prices up and down as it demands, think of the chaos. Great. Uh, and just a follow-up, uh, two out of the three measures you're announcing today require substantial buy-in from either the provinces or the banks. Um, do you think those measures will be enough to win back millennial and Gen Z voters who previously had overwhelmingly voted for you, uh, but have now moved to the Conservative Party? I got into focused on young people. I was a 
high school teacher here in BC. I got in as a youth advocate and an environmental activist, and I made working for young people the center of my campaign to become prime minister and have focused on them ever since. And the reality is young people who are key to our present and obviously key to our future are seeing a system that is stacked against them. Again, Trudeau's right. He's just indicting himself. Firstly, I do not disbelieve him. I believe him fully when he says that he is focusing on young individuals. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's the case because he knows that if young individuals are constrained by socialism, if they're constrained by poverty, then they have to go to the federal government for help. It means that the new generation, the new Canada is completely subservient to the federal government, to centralized government, to Trudeau's bureaucracy. Young individuals, as a consequence of all of these market factors, all of these government or all of this government involvement in mark in the markets are increasingly impoverished. They can't afford homes, so they go to government. They can't afford groceries, so they go to government. They can't afford to pay their student loans, so they go to government. Again and again and again, the situation is the same. And all the while, government is expanding its size and its power day by day by day until it becomes this all-encompassing, overwhelming storm that becomes impossible to stop. So of course, Trudeau is working on the young generation. He's the one that, or they're the ones that he wants to rule. And they're the ones he knows, if they're completely dependent on government, transform the shape and structure of Canada to fit Trudeau's will. Now he says they see a system that isn't working for them. Again, that's absolutely correct. But who created the system? Is it the creation of free market capitalism? Of course it isn't. On the contrary, it's the creation of big government. It's a consequence of big government. And yet Trudeau says the solution is more government. That's true in Canada, but it's true elsewhere around the world. So what we are focused on now is making sure that young people can see their success in the economy, can see that their hard work is going to build a stable, better life for them. And we're starting today by recognizing that so many young people are renters, and being renters don't see anymore that pathway towards home ownership that was available to previous generations. One of the things we're doing to change that today is by, yes, working with banks, with lenders, with landlord associations, and with, uh, with uh, fintech uh, innovations in the financial sector that are already moving forward on measures like this to make sure that anyone who's paying rent anywhere across the country is able to demonstrate that reliability of paying rent every month as being worthy of the kind of investment that banks can make to get a mortgage later on. It's about changing the rules of a game in a way that meets young people where they are and responds to their hopes and dreams for the future. That's what I'm really excited about right now. Okay, so this comparison between renting and mortgage or rentals, rental payments and mortgage payments is ridiculous and dangerous. They are two entirely different things. Risk, for example, is different in both of those structures. With a rental payment, if a man can't meet it one month, tragically, he's kicked out of his apartment or his condo, but there is zero risk to lenders. Zero. There's no massive home that he's sitting on. The same is not true for a mortgage payment. When the bank gives a man a mortgage payment or gives a man a mortgage, the bank expects the man to pay it back. And if the man can't, think of all that money now that's on the bank's books. It's a huge amount of money. The risk is much different. So to compare the two is ridiculous. The goal is not to give anyone and everyone a mortgage. We already tried that years ago. Look where it led us. The banks were giving literally almost anyone a mortgage. And now people are in serious trouble, serious trouble, because you had banks giving out uh, mortgages to would be, should be renters who did not have the capital to rationally purchase a house at the size that they were purchasing. And now that mortgage payments are increasing, people are panicked. They're stretched as it is. This idea that we can just throw out practically free money to whoever we want, whenever we want, is nonsense. And it will lead to our destruction if we keep on this path. We know that rents have gone up across the country because of a few different factors. Uh, first of all, a shortage of housing, uh, a shortage of uh, apartments for rent, a shortage of units available on the market, which of course 
drives up prices. It's more accurate to say we have a massive increase in demand in this nation. We have a borderline exponential. It's not exponential, but it's a huge increase in demand. Justin Trudeau and his government are pursuing a policy of mass immigration. Everyone knows that. They are importing hundreds of thousands of new individuals into this country every single year. And those individuals need homes to live in. It's not their fault. It's just a fact. People need places to live. What does that do to the demand for housing? It shifts it to the right significantly. Now, can the supply of housing meet that change in demand? Of course not. It takes longer than a day or two days or 10 days or even a month or two months to build a home. It takes a long time to build a home. And so we have all of this lag on the supply side trying to catch up with this increasing demand. What does it mean happen? Or what is what, what happens as a consequence of these new market conditions? Prices rise. Prices for homes rise. It's a signal to or a signal to suppliers, to contractors to build, build, build as fast as you can because there's profit to be made. And it's a signal to buyers that the housing market is tight for supply. It's a far more accurate way to describe it. Of course, then the solution would be to put a freeze, a total freeze on all immigration. To put a total freeze on all immigration, that's not a racist thing to say. It's a fact. Canada cannot handle at the present time. It cannot handle this massive influx of immigration. It can't, economically or otherwise. That's the first step in solving the housing crisis, which means Trudeau won't take it, at least not seriously. Which is why over the past year, including by removing the GST on purpose-built rental housing, which has led to many new apartment building projects going up, the Housing Accelerator Fund, which is changing the way municipalities zone and build density. Uh, we're investing massive amounts of not just money, but effort and partnerships in increasing supply across the country so there are more units which will keep uh, prices down. What is this? This is just more socialism, more socialism, more socialism. The Housing Accelerator Fund, for example, gives the federal government an iron grip over municipalities and how municipalities build new structures, new dwelling structures. We're investing, says Trudeau. Government never invests for profit. Government uh, invests for political profitability, which often means the investment is inefficient and unnecessary and flat out wrong. Government shouldn't be investing in the market. Government should be reducing and removing all of these restrictions and red tape that make it difficult for individuals to build new homes or investors to build no homes, new homes. While at the same time, again, putting a freeze, an absolute freeze on immigration so that demand won't keep rising into the stratosphere and will instead return to normal levels. At the same time, we know there's challenges on the supply side as the uh, uh, proper population of temporary residents in this country has reached 6.5% of our total population, up from around 2 or 3% just five or six years ago. That's put tremendous pressure on the rental market, and that's why uh, we're uh, turning... Uh, turning the dial a little bit on temporary residents, whether it's international students or temporary foreign workers, to make sure that they uh, are a number that can be properly absorbed by our housing stocks. Weak, weak answer. We're turning the dial a little bit, he says, on all of that nonsense. Do you know what number, uh, what the percentage of immigration we should have in the country is right now? Zero. It's zero. It's zero. We have to have a freeze. Again, it's not, it's not a racist thing to say. The fact of the matter is Canada, Canada cannot handle this massive influx of new individuals. So we're working both on the demand side and on the supply side. But the reality is young people are spending a huge amount of their income on rent. And if you look at someone who pays a $2,000 mortgage, they're getting recognition and credit for that from the bank as part of their credit score. But if you're paying $2,000 a month on rent, that gives you no kudos. It gives you no credit. It gives you no, uh, no recognition that you are working hard to meet your obligations and pay a sizable sum every month. That's why this change of making sure that 
the money you pay in rent every month is recognized as part of your reliability, as part of your credit score, will help you eventually unlock home ownership, access a mortgage, access borrowing, and be able to build that future that we know you deserve. Thank you. And if I could ask a follow-up on the um, talks with the provinces and territories, have you started those and how long do you expect that to take? I have to say, being here in BC, I cannot help but, uh, uh, but uh, emphasize that the positive conversations we've had uh, with a number of governments, BC being for, uh, forefront among them, on solving the rental and the housing crisis uh, that people are facing right across the country. The BC Builds program, which was $2 billion put forward by BC that we matched with $2 billion from the federal government, is unlocking affordable housing across the province in an extraordinarily impactful way. We move forward with a housing accelerator fund investment uh, in Vancouver and in a number of uh, municipalities across the Lower Mainland that is changing the way we build housing uh, in, this, uh, in this part of the country and indeed right across the country. And we're going to continue to work with provinces right across the country who recognize the challenges of and the need to step up in partnership on solving this housing crisis. What is the theme of this talk of these questions? We're not going to listen to any more. We've heard enough. The theme is again, bigger government, more government, more socialism. It's the strangest thing. They are the cause of this crisis of this housing crisis so their solution is injecting more of themselves into the market they're the ones who caused the problem and so they find themselves worthy to fix the problem does it make any sense to you does it make any sense to any of us it certainly doesn't which is exactly why the government is pursuing it now i said it was a strange thing that they're doing so but as i think a little bit more actually i realize it isn't such a strange thing that they're doing so this is trudeau's plan Yes, he wants to crash the economy. Yes, he wants to crash Canada. He wants to crash the country. How could a man think anything else when we look at all that Justin Trudeau was doing at the present time? Do his actions make sense from, an, from a vantage point of he wants to help the Canadian people? They certainly don't. Do his actions make sense from the uh, precipice, from the, from the vantage point again of Justin Trudeau wants to help the poor. He wants to build a strong and proud Canada. No, nope, not for one moment. The opposite is true. If instead we approach what Trudeau is doing from the angle of he wants to ruin this country, he wants to tear it down and then replace it with something evil, everything makes sense.